welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we explore the urban lifestyle and jungle survival. First up, a very happy new year to you. This is the first video of 2023, and I hope you have a fantastic year ahead. In this first video, I'm going to share with you my urban apartment bug out bag. What makes this unique is designed for an urban environment for me, who's living in a condominium apartment. So I'm 11 stories up. And in this part of the world or any metropolitan city, it's a concrete jungle. So it's a lot of built up buildings going up to 30 stories high. So this bag was designed specifically to get out of my apartment, get down and out of the property and to get out to maybe another building or somewhere that's safe, depending on what the situation is. For many bug out bags out there, for people who live in a house, landed property, that they get out of the house, across town or across the state and often have to be out in the wilderness. But this bug out bag is a bit different because everything around me is urban. There is some jungle further out I wouldn't go there unless I really have to, and some of these items would still work well in the outdoor environment since I do go out to the jungle every week anyway. First, if you watch this channel regularly but have not subscribed, please do so by hitting the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. It will really help the channel out. Let's talk about the pack itself. This is a military style pack. This is 50 liters, so pretty large. It's got all these molly attachments, which I favor, as well as buckles and straps. It's made of heavy duty nylon, so very strong. Stitching is great as well. And there's this detachable front pouch, which I'll show you in just a bit. I'm not sure if you can get this exact pack. It is from Indonesia. And I believe the product code on the tag that I got was 520YJ1314. And I think it's perfect for my needs. And I'm going to take care of it for a very long time because I'm sure it'll take care of me as well. I'll first show you what I have here. And this is attached to one of the straps. This is an additional pouch that I bought. The Molly attachments which straps it to the strap and it also clips to the strap itself. So it's very secure. This isn't going anywhere. But the reason why I have this is so that I can access essential equipment without having to take off the pack. So what I have inside, just two items. But I've got a headlamp. This is a Claris headlamp. So in an apartment building, if the lights go out, power goes out, you definitely need light. Or if it's at night, you will need light as well. And I also have over here a multi-tool and this is the Leatherman Rebar. And I've talked about this particular multi-tool and why I think it's great for urban or bushcraft outdoor survival. So you can check out that video in the link in the card above or the description below. So all this goes inside here. There's a slot for that. And then I can take the headlamp, put that there and then it's there for easy access. Now let's start off with the front pouch. So there are two main compartments for this particular bag, one front and one the main compartment. So let's unclip this and then we'll open up this front pouch first. So the front pouch is where I put kind of my essential, I guess you call, call them maybe tools or equipment that I think I'll need. So a first aid kit, of course, essential for any bug out bag. And over here I've got all the things you expect to find in a kit from gauze, bandages, ointments, eye drops, super glue, hand sanitizer. Uh, there's also medication. There's also got these fast shoot electrolytes if you're out for a long time and you need the energy that will give you the burst of energy. Uh, so just a kit uh, to attend to all basic first aid needs. And I also have a military style first aid dressing over here for more severe wounds. Now, the most likely scenario that would cause one to bug out of an apartment is fire. This is the number one reason why we need to evacuate. There had been a fire scare once before in my property, another block, uh, there was a fire, so we did have to evacuate. So a very real life scenario. Of course, the second most possible reason, zombie attacks. But sticking to fire, what I have over here, gloves. Uh, to move any debris or if things might get hot, uh, I need to have a good pair of gloves. I think that's very important. Hard knuckle as well, so this is pretty heavy duty. Smoke inhalation is a very real danger for uh, fires. So what I have over here are goggles uh, to prevent uh, for smoke getting to the eyes. I've also got this 3M respirator. 
This is the 6200 series with the filters and this is the top filter which basically can block out a lot of different uh, toxins and gas gases. Now not every gas can be blocked, uh, it can block out carbon monoxide uh, but in an urban environment when there's a fire you're going to get you know, all sorts of plastics burning, a lot of chemical fumes will be discharged. So you just want to reduce as much of the intake as possible uh, so that you can get out of that burning building. Next up, I've got some duct tape, always very important, uh, useful in any survival situation. And I've also got a wallet. So this wallet is just uh, waterproof, uh, made from nylon. It's got an all-weather notebook as well as a pen with that uh, Fisher Space ink cartridge can write anywhere. And I got this size because it can hold a passport as well as important documents. So in a bug out situation, all those can be shoved inside and put into the pack. So let's now go to the main compartment over here. So this main compartment is pretty big. Uh, I mentioned this bag is about 50 litres, but I really only fill it to, I would say maybe two thirds full at most. The idea is not to stuff it completely. I did have a weight requirement. I wanted it uh, below 10 kg. This is currently about 9 kg, so about 20 pounds. Uh, because in a bug out situation, you need to be able to carry something easily, uh, go down flights of stairs. You can't be weighed down by 20, 30 kg of equipment. I also did not go ultra light because I think that's just important equipment that needs to be brought along uh, for survival as well as for some comfort as you'll see as well. So in this main compartment, I've, I would say this is all more of my administrative compartment. So the front pouch is more for essential tools and gears. This is more administrative. So over here, I've got some basic toiletries or, you know, this, uh, tissue paper or napkins, uh, disposable wipes, uh, magic towels, which expand when you add water uh, and plastic bags as well. So all that kept in uh, this kind of a Ziploc bag. Over here, I've got my water purification kit, right? So this is the Sawyer Mini Squeeze, I believe. So I've shared uh, this kit in a previous video. You can check out the link in the card above or the description below. I've also got these coffee filters for filtering water. And there's also got uh, the water bottle for water collection before you actually uh, filter it. So all that goes into a kit like that in an urban, urban environment when you get out uh, water still has to be purified just like the outdoor environment got some rations uh, some energy bars as well as drinks uh, to be made uh, maybe more so for morale or just a bit of energy but for rations I also have some MREs I've got two of them so this is uh, chicken frank pasta and this is a uh, chicken rice with mushroom so again, all pre-packed, you can just eat it like that. You do not need to heat it up if you do not want. Got an extra shirt, a towel and socks. I don't have any other clothing. This is really in the event you get really wet and you just need to change something again, more for comfort and morale. For water, I've got this water bottle. So it's a stainless steel canister. Uh, it's on this kind of a molly pouch as well, but I do want to attach it to the pack later on if I need. So this comes out and I covered this particular bottle in a previous video that you can check out as well. So it's currently filled with water. This is one liter. I've also got a small pot over here. If we need to collect and boil water, there's a lid as well. So that's it for this main compartment. There is one slot over here, which I have a few items. I've got a poncho. Uh, which also can be used as a tarp shelter because it is a bit customized in terms of how it can be used uh, for a shelter. And I'll share this in a separate video as well. So this is more for cover in terms of rain, but also in creating a shelter if there's a need. This is the Big Blue 28 watt solar charger. So this is uh, solar panels. And also, I've done a video on this. You can check it out. Again, in an urban environment, uh, during the day, if I need you know, more power to charge up a device or maybe a torchlight, uh, again, this is small, compact, fits in, and I at least have some form of generating power. And finally, I've got a water bottle. 
a water bag, I guess. So this is two liters in capacity, again, used for collecting water if I need in a survival situation. So that's it for the main compartments. On the outside, on this side, I have a fixed blade knife. This is the Lion Steel M3. And I spoke about this knife before as well. And this is my knife uh, that I chose for bushcraft. You can check out the video in the link above or the description below. I like this knife so much that I've gotten two. So the other one I have is in the Santos Wood, which I now use for uh, outdoor adventures. So this one has now been converted uh, for my bug out bag. So that fits over here. If I need, I can always remove it and put it on my belt if I need, but if not, it's attached here. And if I do need to get it uh, to deploy quickly, all I need to do is to release one of the straps, my left strap, the bag will swing down and my hand can immediately grab this knife easily and deploy it if I need. Now we come to my front tool pouch. So this is what I consider my main emergency or survival gear, a bit different from the gear in that front pouch and definitely different from the admin stuff over here. Uh, but it's got all, I guess, all the survival gear I think I need in this urban bug out environment. I do have a hatchet over here. This is the Shred Skax 10. That's right, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. So it's actually slotted in to the back of uh, this pouch over here. Now, it cannot go anywhere because on this side, I've got a bit of paracord and I've got it kind of hooked over here. So in order for the axe to be deployed, all I need to do is open this and I can release the paracord on this side. This then allows for the axe to be removed just like that. Now again, in an urban environment, while this is a small axe, it is actually very effective. I used it for bushcraft uh, as my first axe. Uh, very competent axe. It's all full tank, one piece construction. And in an urban environment, you might need to you know, get debris out of the way. You might need to uh, try to get through a door which is locked. And if you don't have anything, at least an axe is, like this can help if there's no fireman's axe uh, on the floor. So I think this can be very useful. It's quite light. I would say this is probably about uh, 500 grams, uh, half a kg, maybe 600 grams. Uh, but it's also very small. And the way it's slot in, it's quite concealed. It won't scare anyone unless I need to use it. In this pouch over here, it is attached by Molly attachments if I need it to. Maybe to reduce weight or just to separate out uh, to share the gear with anyone in an envi urban environment. I always believe you might not be alone. Uh, so you might need to work together or you might need to split your load. Maybe I need to carry other things that I put up, put inside along the way. Uh, for whatever reason, if I do need, I can detach this if I need. Now let me show you what I have inside here. One of the things which I think is uh, pretty unique uh, would be this ladder system. So what we have is a nylon ladder and it's got carabiners and basically you can use this as a getaway. Now it's not very long. I've got two of them here joined together. So almost about four meters. When you're in an apartment building, sometimes you may need to get down. There's no way you can climb down 11 floors of this and that's not the idea behind this. But often you might get to floors which might be blocked off and you need to get to another floor and there are often many landings available but they could be about one story or one and a half stories down and you need some way to get down uh, jumping is really a last resort because you can get hurt so an emergency ladder like this will allow you to uh, lock this onto a railing and in apartments like this there are definitely many railings or some kind of rigging points that's available and you can use this to descend in an emergency situation. So I think this is quite important. I have this in the main compartment of this front pouch here. So again, uh, there's nothing else with it because I do not want anything to be tangled inside. So this is really by itself, uh, but really it's in this main compartment and if I need it, I can deploy it really quickly. In this front pouch, I've got a combination of items. Got uh, candles, you never, know, no, uh, when you might need them, you do not want to use up all your batteries in your flashlight. So I use that. I've also got uh, two glow sticks uh, if I need. Got some paracord uh, to create shelters or, you know, do any kind of rigging. 
Paracord oil is very important and useful. And for navigation, I've got this mirror compass over here. So lightweight, but serves its purposes, especially in an urban environment where you might actually find yourself in maybe a subway system, uh, then this definitely can be useful. I've got two more pouches on either side of this front pouch. And over here, I keep my urban survival pouch in this micro max position pouch. I've done a video on this uh, to show you all the tools I have inside from another fixed blade, torch lights, all kinds of emergency items for an urban environment. So do check out the link in the card above or the description below. Inside over here, I also have an emergency blanket. So if you're outdoors, even in an urban environment to protect against the elements, I've got a poncho and a tarp combination, which I use a shelter, uh, but I also have this blanket if needed. One side is reflective in terms of silver and the other side is this bright orange. So it can be used as a signal panel as well. Finally, in this pouch over here is my little kind of a cook kit in this waterproof pouch. I've got an S-bit stove and wrapped around I've also got a lighter. There's a green twist tie over here so that it doesn't depress and I don't lose gas. But if I open this up, I've got some solid fuel as well as waxed jute. So all this can be used to start a fire, uh, to boil water, to cook food. Uh, you never know when you might need it. Again, could be more for a morale booster, but doesn't take up much space and fits perfectly in the pocket over there. There you have it, all the items in my urban apartment bug out bag. Do you think I missed anything out or have you prepared an urban apartment bug out bag as well? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.